And good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Hope you're having a great Monday morning so far. Um, I certainly am. Really enjoying my coffee this morning for some reason. Have you ever noticed <clears throat> sometimes you get a really good scald on your coffee and other times it's like, eh, whatever. Uh, anyway, got a good scald on my coffee this morning. Really, really good. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is what I call my morning musings. We're in the midst of a study of what's known as the already, but the not yet. In the New Testament, the writers very often spoke of salvation, redemption, justification, sanctification, resurrection, blah, blah, blah. All of those as present realities. Then they would turn around and say that those things had not yet happened. They were coming. And here's a kicker. Here's something very, very critical. They always said that what was not yet present, although they said it was present, the not yet was imminent. It was about to take place. In our last installment in this study, we examined 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and what Paul had to say about Christ putting all things under his feet. I want to read this, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 and following. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered the, up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. He has put all enemies un, or all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted who put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now, I pointed out in the last installment, it is absolutely critical for us to see the already but the not yet here. Notice, he, the last enemy to be destroyed, from the Greek word katargeo, is death. When he has put all things under him, now here he uses a, a Greek word, hupotazo, and then he says, all things have been put under him, hupotazo. So here Paul uses two distinctive Greek words, and he says, he has put all things under his feet. And then he says, but he will put all things under his feet. And he uses an interchange between katargeo, which means one of two things, either abolish, take out of existence, or to nullify the power, nullify the strength, to bring to nothing. Not take out of existence, but to bring to nothing. Those are the two basic definitions of katargeo. Well, he's using katargeo and hupatazo interchangeably. But the critical point here, obviously, is to see that he says he has put all things under him. Now, folks, I don't care what our concept of subjection is. I don't care what our concept, for instance, of kingdom and resurrection or death is. Paul said, Christ had already subjected everything, everything except the Father and death. In a public debate one time, my opponent said, well, I don't, I, I still see sin. Well, Paul said everything had been subjected to Christ. So if we're going to appeal to our visible eyes, we're going to deny what Paul said. Paul said everything except death had been subjected. Now, he said the last enemy to be destroyed, katargeo, the last enemy to be put under him, hupatazo, was death. 
When would that take place? Obviously, the resurrection. Now, I want you to see how Paul says that that final event, no matter our concept of it, was near. In 1 Corinthians 15, 50 and following, brethren, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. Sleep here, euphemism for death. Now, Paul's writing to living, breathing humans, and he said not all of that audience would, would die before the resurrection. Secondly, notice Paul says in verse 54 and following, when the mortal has put on immortality, when the corruptible has put on incorruptibility, then will be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. O grave, where is your victory? Now the strength of sin is the law. I want you to follow me very, very quickly here. Paul said the resurrection would be the time of immortality when the law that was the strength of sin would be taken away. So of the resurrection, when death would be taken away, resurrection, when the law that was the strength of sin would be taken away. Now let me ask you a question. What was the law that was the strength of sin? <laughs> In numerous public debates, I have asked my opponents, what is the law that was the strength of the sin in 1 Corinthians 15. In all but one or two debates, my opponent has said, Law of Moses. Well, you know what? That's absolutely correct. Only one law is ever described as the strength of sin. Paul said, I had not known sin, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. And the law, which was actually intended for good for me, became death to me. Oops, the law was the strength of sin and death. The resurrection would be when the law that was the strength of sin was removed. The law that was the strength of sin was Torah, the law of Moses. Therefore, the resurrection when the last enemy to be destroyed would be put under, or that was death, would be katargeod, would be when Torah was removed. You catch that? The resurrection would be when the law that was the strength of sin was removed. The law that was the strength of sin was Torah. Therefore, the resurrection would be when Torah was taken away. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 that Torah, not the administration of Torah as some have so desperately argued, Paul said the law of Moses, Torah, was ready on the point of vanishing away. See the power of that? So we not only have the indisputable fact of, of the already, of all things being put under Christ, we have the statement of imminence of that occurrence when the law, which was the strength of sin, would be removed. And Paul said, the law, which was the strength of sin, was on the point of passing away in Hebrews chapter 8. The already, but the not yet, of resurrection. The already but the not yet of all things being put under his feet. Hey, thanks for much, so much for joining me for this morning's morning musings. We got more. We'll see you on the flip side.